Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, so today I'll speak about these conjectures of Erdős. Uh, generally speaking, uh, in my work, I use ergodic theory to address problems in number theory and in combinatorics. And one set of problems that I've been working on for a couple of years now are these uh, assumption conjectures of Erdős. But I also want to give you a little bit of the historic background and what motivated Erdős to ask those questions in the first place. Uh, and the starting point is at the beginning of the 20th century, Schur uh, was investigating a local variant of Fermat's theorem. So he was wondering about this equation here. Of course, the naive idea would be that if you don't have any solutions here, they don't have any solutions in the integers, that would have been a cheap way of getting it from us last year. But he showed, as a matter of fact, that for any m, there is a co-finite set of p's, such that this one here has non-trivial solutions. But surprisingly, this is not what is known as Schur's theorem, because what today is known as Schur's theorem is a lemma that he used to prove this one here. And it has to do with colorings. So for any finite coloring of integers, and I think of a finite coloring just as a finite partition. So for any finite partition into R many cells, one of these cells contains, it contains a solution to the equation X plus y equals c. Or another way of saying that is it contains x, y, x plus y. Historically speaking, this is the first result of an area that today we call Ramsey theory. And the philosophy beside, behind Ramsey theory is that if you have a set that's sufficiently large, that it should, then it should contain some sort of arithmetic structure. And Schur, inspired by his, at the time, lemma, nowadays theorem, uh, went third and asked, well, maybe it's possible that whenever you have a finite coloring of the integers, one of those colors contains even more arithmetic arrangements. Maybe it contains arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions. So that's what he conjectured, and that was proved by Van de Burden in 1923. And so it says that for any finite coloring, One of the colors contains arbitrarily long arithmetic expressions. So it contains a K term arithmetic progression for any K. Uh, one of the downsides of Van der Verden's theorem is that it tells you one of those colors contains these arithmetic arrangements, but it doesn't tell you exactly which color. And uh, this motivated to run an Erdős to come forth with the following conjecture. They said, well, maybe one of those sets must have positive density. So maybe it's this set that contains this structure already. And so let me tell you what density is. So the density of a set is defined as the limit this n goes to infinity of the proportion that A occupies within the first n integers normalized. And as an example, the density of all the integers is equal to one. The density of the even integers is equal to one half because 50% of all numbers are even. Uh, maybe let's trivial the density of the square of numbers. So all numbers that are not divisible by a perfect square is six over pi squared. And, and this is not always a positive number. There are plenty of sets that have zero density. For instance, the primes, since their growth rate is sublinear, has zero density. And so we can dis distinguish between large sets, those, those which have positive density, and small sets, those which have zero density or sparse sets. And so, Yadish and Duran conjectured any set with positive density contains arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions. 
and it was proved by Samoyedi in 1975. So any subset of the integers with positive density contains a term arithmetic regressions of arbitrarily long length. Okay, so this gives some insight in what kind of finite arrangements you can find in large sets. This leaves open the question if you can find any kind of infinite arithmetic arrangements. And this is much harder and the first and perhaps uh, one of the only results we have in the direction is Hindman's theorem. In the state Hindman's theorem, I first have to tell you what is a finite subset so the finite subset of a two element set x and y is just equal to x, y, and x plus y. Similarly, the finite subset of three integers is just x, y, z. This is all the one sums. Then all the two sums, x plus y, x plus z, y plus z, and then finally all the three sums, which is only one, x plus y plus z. And I'm sure you can now guess what is the finite sum set of an infinite sequence. It's just the sequence itself together with all the finite sums I can build out of it. So x1, x2, x1. I can write it, it's x by one plus x by k, where the i k's, they're, they're all different. I hope this makes sense. And so what sure in this language, what sure said is that for any finite coloring, I can find a monochromatic set of this kind. But actually the very same proof shows I can find a monochromatic set of this kind, or as a matter of fact, all finite length. But that left open the question, what about infinite? And that's what Heimann showed. So for any, for any finite coloring, one of the colors contains an infinite sequence together with all its finite sums. Okay, I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> and now we come to this uh, subset conjectures of Erdős. Because Erdős observed, well, Van der Burton's theorem generalized so nicely to a density version. So it's very natural to ask, is there a density version of Heidmann's theorem? Well, the first observe me, uh, observation you have to make is, you cannot just ask for a set of positive density to contain a creature like that, because you can just take the odd numbers and the odd numbers will not even contain this one here. But all you need to do is you need to shift the odd numbers by one and then all of a sudden you're good. So the other asks, is it true that for any set with positive density, there exists a shift. All I have to do is shift it such that the shift contains a minus t contains an infinite subset. Infinite finite subset. Unfortunately, uh, shortly afterwards, uh, Ernst Strauss gave a count example, so the answer is no. And uh, essentially, you can find sets whose density is arbitrarily close to one, so they are quite large, that already fail this particular field. Yeah. Okay, but this didn't really deter Erdős, so he just said, okay, uh, this object here contains all elements, all two sums, all three sums, all four sums, and so on. What if we just ask 
for all the two subs and nothing else. So that's the Adish's first conjecture here. So any subset of the integers with positive density contains a set of the form xi plus xj, where i is not equal to j, for some infinite sequence. After but you need to shift. The shift. You need to shift. Oh, shift. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, there exists a shift, and then such that a complex. Thank you very much. So you always need to shift because otherwise the the odd integers always give you a complex. Okay, but this seemed still quite ambitious and far away from in our reality at the time. So Yadosh made the second weaker conjecture. And so he said any, yes, for the weaker property, is it true that for any subset of integers with positive density, uh, there are infinite, two infinite sets B and C. A contains the subset B plus C, which is just the sum of all B and C elements. Okay, and so I hope it's not too hard to see that conjecture one implies conjecture two, because if I have conjecture one, I can split the sequence into two parts, and I can absorb the shift into one of these parts, and those are the two infinite sets, and I'm done, right? So conjecture uh, two is strictly weaker. Okay, and so let me tell you about some of the results. In 2019, we were able to resolve the weaker of the two, conjecture two. <clears throat> and so we, we, we used ergodic theory and some ideas from free analysis to find two infinite sets, B and C, such that the sum set is in A. Uh, and then this problem that the question, well, can our techniques give conjecture one? And something else that's very natural to ask, ask well, if, I, if A contains the sum of two infinite sets, maybe it contains the sum of three infinite sets. Okay, and so both those things that we were stuck on for a couple of years until uh, earlier this year, so first, we were able to show that any subset of the integers with positive density uh, contains the sum of k infinite sets, where k for any k. <coughs> And to obtain this result, we kind of had to completely reinvent the tools. So it doesn't really have a lot to do with our original machinery. Uh, and then we realized that this new approach that we had was actually much more useful, much more natural, and it allowed us to get conjecture one, two. So conjecture one. Okay, so I've pretty much exhausted my time. Let me just say that uh, the tools that we use come from topological dynamics and ergodic the theory. So first we translate, say conjecture one, to a question about orbits in dynamical systems with certain properties. And then we can use the structure theory of dynamical systems to study these kind of arrangements. And uh, yeah, unfortunately I don't have more time to say anything about that, but thank you very much. Questions? You have a sense, suppose this, you know, D of A, how large uh, B and C would be if you take A from one to N? Is it just logarithmic? 
We don't have any asymptotic growth. Yeah, something we can say for certain is that neither B nor C can be positive density. Right? So they are just flip a coin infinitely often that gives you a set A with density one half, which will not have this property. Um, other than that, uh, I mean, our approach is dynamical. We first you know, use a correspondence principle and uh, it's very infinitary. So um, it would be very interesting to see some sort of growth right here, but uh, is there of the, sorry, sorry yeah. it's not good you finish. I'm not finished, but. Uh, I just wanted to say, this is one of the things why this is so tricky. It's an infinite arrangement uh, as opposed to similarly this theorem. So you kind of need to look into the future when choosing the elements. And, and that makes it very hard to have some sort of quantitative approach. Yeah. Okay. Can you say then, since it's different to Semiradi or Kirstenberg's proof of Semiradi, what is the sort of dynamical theorem that implies that? Uh, Just in words. In, in words, uh, we, we study. So we need. Uh, Suppose you have a dynamical system, then dynamical system means topological or measure? topological dynamical system. Then these kind of uh, subsets are controlled by triples x0, x2, and x, x1, x2, such that x1 and x2 belongs to the orbit closure of x0, x1 under the transformation d cross d. And so studying all those triples will allow you to uh, find some sets of this form. And then you can ask, what are the factors that control these kind of triples? It turns out it's the Neil factors. Yeah. OK, thanks. Have you considered transferring some of these results to primes? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's a big open problem, right? Do the primes contain, contain the sum of two infinite sets? Uh, B plus C, and I mean, they're much uh, weaker questions that are still far open, and uh, <laughs> I've, I've been told it's far out of reach currently. Um, I mean, just maybe a quick observation. If you, if the primes contain the sum of two infinite sets, this immediately implies bounded gaps, right? So you, it's, it's quite a lot to ask for. Does bounded gaps imply something weaker? <laughs> Uh, no, as far as I know, nothing infinite is, is known. Yeah. So it's again, uh, we can find a lot of maybe finite arithmetic arrangements in the primes, but infinite ones are still seem out of reach. Okay, we expect the solution of this problem by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we called you guys. Uh, density can be can be any density whatsoever. So you can dense, can take density along any formal sequence and the same methods work. And maybe I also comment here, conjecture two, we can do in any amenable group. Uh, but conjecture one and this theorem about higher sums, we can only do in the interest. So there's also something that we don't know how to do here. Yeah. Okay. There doesn't seem to be any other questions. Thank you. Thank you.